Here with Go Ghost Go, new name change, right? Ghost, Ghost, Ghost to Go. go. Ghost to Go. How did like tomato, tomato. tomato. Yeah. You know. How did it happen? So, right. it was, we were Ghost Go Ghost, and then the poster said Ghost to Go, and we were like, we like that better, and so we switched. It's really been a name change problem that we've had. We haven't liked any mm. of them. Because, it, but on the other hand, if you change your band name a million times, then you don't have a really, you don't have a band, you don't mm. have an identity. Mm. We're all about. Mm. Oh yeah, we're all about identity. Ew. All about identities. So all about guys, identities. Did you guys do a lot with of? With Z. With a Z. Yeah. Mm. Shut up. Yeah. With a Z. <laughs> <laughs> so how would you how would you guys describe your sound? Garage rock. Your identity. Garage rock. Garage rock. That's been pretty garage punk. Rock. That's post. garage rock. No post really. Okay. No, just garage rock. Yeah, that's been pretty steady. <laughs> big genres at Wesleyan right now? Mm. Or are you guys one of the spearheading the movement? No. no. The garage rock revival happened in 2000 with like mm. the white stripes and the strokes and the hives and they were all like, Yeah, we were real late mm. on that shit. And we were like 10 years late. So mm. now we're like reviving something they got revived 10 years ago. And 20 years ago if you can't the Detroit one. And then it started in the 60s. So we're really, really, really we're really late. We're it just started. biting people garage who bit people Garage rock, who rock bit people. started. The real, no, the actual. The garage rock started when mm -hmm. British invasion bands mm -hmm. got ripped off by American kids who couldn't play their instruments at all. And the thing is, before MTV and before, really, the I before like 1975, there really wasn't this idea that people would go to a room and dance to pre-recorded music. No one did that. So there, there was this economic, there That's had to be a band. So there was an economic niche for a million bands, yep. right? So every frat party you've ever gone to would have a there's band. There's a DJ. Mm. But before that, really think about it, before before iPods, but like even before before hip hop, you couldn't really DJ a party with records. So you because you'd have to flip. I knew the same 20 songs they knew. Roll yeah, over every, Beethoven, bands, Twist bands, and Shout, like that's and the whole bar band thing. You don't need a fucking DJ. You have a bar band that plays all the hits. So there was a million there was some amazing statistic I heard once that was like in 1964 uh, like a fifth mm. of the men between ages 18 and 25 were in bands. Mm -hmm. So really, there were some really crude, really shitty bands trying to play blues covers badly, mm -hmm. and then accidentally invented garage rock, and it Which was just awesome. the shit. The main differences are between the Wesleyan scene and the Yale scene. I think you can. There is a Wesleyan scene. Um, Yale bands, there's like seven of us. And more a cappella groups. Yeah, there's like a bajillion. The no, no, everyone that. loves the whiffin' poops True across that. America. That's the kind of thing. We're, we're really like our campus's musical energy has gone towards a cappella, and that's chill, but just that means when there's bands, there's not as many of us, it's and we don't have Wesleyan, a draw. Wesleyan also, I think, has gotten in this weird way self supporting in the last couple of years where people go to Wesleyan because there are bands that are from Wesleyan, and there's like, and it. It's weird because the Wesleyan doesn't quite reflect it, but there's like a stupid number of bands from Wesleyan. So as a whole, how do you think that Yale could maybe strengthen their music scene? I mean, it's the problem is that, like there's not much you can do. We have places where we have shows, and we have this shows. This place, this venue is amazing, by the yeah, way. Yeah, we love this place. I love this place. I play here all the time. I've played here like with three different here, bands man. three times this year. The Rain Brigade was my Yale band, but. Sadly, our drummer went abroad, and so we're sort of on like a shady hiatus, waiting for him to come back from China to us. But it, it's That's the sort of nice. thing where it's the kind of thing where That's not James much Bond movie, I think, from not China much, to us. Not much can happen without just more bands. There just aren't enough bands quite to support a thing because I know venues that are actively, constantly looking for acts to play their gigs. It's like, well, we want to have a show every weekend, but there's seven bands. So, you know, by a month into the semester, everybody's already played. If you have a show every week, and then the problem is you go like, well, you know, if we have, if the same band's playing the same place four times a semester, how many people are going to... Another difference is, I don't know about Yale, but I know that one of the amazing things at Wesleyan was that, I, I graduated in, in last May, um, was that there's a couple of really intense um, kind of student organizations that get funding that are constantly bringing in cool bands. And I think that's a really big help, because the thing is, actually... To get people to like a student band, people need to see them a lot. And everyone's like, oh, I don't want to see so-and-so. But if you're like, oh, so-and-so's opening for blankety-blank in the blanks. Yeah, I'll fucking go see them. And I'll catch like the last three songs of their set. And they're like, oh my god, they were really fucking 
good. Well, next time you guys are in town, you're going to have to be sure to let WIBC know. And we will probably be playing here. Yes. So, yeah, <laughs> to be honest. Great. Right? Well, you guys, thank you so much, everybody. Wesleyan's finest right here. <laughs> thank you so much for listening, and we'll get back to you later.